Hi, Ron Clark here. Another week of the magic box. Now, I've been hearing some noises go on inside the box, so I don't know. I think there's a bunch of spiders that have uh, infested the box and increased, multiplied the number of questions inside. So keep your fingers crossed. Let's see what happens this time. Okay. Oh, jeez. Oh, dear. Well, we've got another bunch of questions. So, the first question is, you always hear people that believe in reincarnation talk about wanting to escape this cycle of death and rebirth. Some people believe that once you advance your soul enough, you will be able to escape the reincarnation cycle. On the other hand, some believe that you don't escape this cycle by dreading it, but instead by accepting it and developing your spirit. Personally, I don't think either of these viewpoints really hit this one on the head. Let's take someone like you, for example. After all the years that you have dedicated to your magical path, would you still have to reincarnate? Or would you come back to Earth voluntarily, i.e. coming back in your own personal choice? Does one's spiritual maturity even play a role in this reincarnation cycle? If you were reborn, would you then have to return, relearn everything that you have learned in this life? If so, isn't that sort of counterproductive? How exactly does one even, I guess, choose to no longer participate in the cycle of reincarnation? Or is this just something that must be accepted? Well, I know it's, it's popular to say, oh, I never want to come back here again, kind of thing. And it's really just a comment on how you feel about existing at this moment in time space and how readily you've adapted to it. <clears throat> Most people aren't really serious in saying that, but some are, and that's, there's a degree of self-absorption and self-pity that sort of revels in feeling that life is totally unfair and not worth living and blah, blah, blah. Um, but the question of samsara, the, the, can we escape the cycle of reincarnation? Essentially, no. This is what awareness does. It in, repeatedly incarnates until essentially it clears all of its karma. Now that in itself is a really complex statement. Clearing all of one's karma is not as simple as we might expect. Because one's karma, your karma, my karma, uh, includes the collective karma, because we are part of the collective. We are part of the collective of living beings. And so we have not just what we think of as our personal karma, but that part of our personal karma that is the group karma. <clears throat> so we can, you know, uh, attain, attain great enlightenment, etc. in a lifetime and still be bound to reincarnation because the group karma has also not been resolved. Okay? So, <clears throat> when the group karma is resolved, reincarnation is no longer necessary. Now, the point, really, of reincarnation is this movement, this self-realization of the One Awareness. Until that One Awareness reaches the completion 
of its self-realization in the temporal present moment, reincarnation must continue. Because the goal has not been reached, right? <clears throat> now, from a supernal perspective, that self-realization is complete. But we live here in the temporal realm. We are temporal awarenesses. Okay, so this is what the temporal awareness is for. This process of self-realization until that is completed for the whole of awareness. Reincarnation continues. Okay. Now, there are individuals who reach a certain level of liberation um, that do not have to incarnate, which means take on a physical body. Okay? That's incarnation, taking on a physical body. However, they still participate in the group karma. So they're not done with the sequential realm. They're still participating in the evolution of awareness. So that's where we get the stories of, of individuals like Babaji, who does not have a physical incarnation, but constantly manifests various bodies to communicate with human beings in the temporal present moment. That's different than reincarnate. Well, it's part of the same modality that coming back until the entire I has self-realized but it is not, strictly speaking, reincarnation, because there's no taking on of a physical body. Okay? I hope that answers. <clears throat> and, ah, yes. So, the individuals who have reached that state where they do not need to incarnate will certainly participate. In that sense, it is coming back voluntarily. But voluntarily means something very different to that level of awareness than it does to the mundane level of awareness. Okay. And <clears throat> The final bit of the question here um, was, how come we have to, well, when we reincarnate, do we always forget the previous incarnations and have to start again? Now, never do we have to start again from the very beginning. I mean, all of you must surely recognize that you started out in this life in a different place in awareness than the basest individual that you have ever met, okay? You started out ahead of them in this process of self-realization, okay? You started out more self-realized than other people. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here right now listening to this video. So we never completely forget. We never completely start from the bare beginning. It might feel like it, but believe me, that's not the bare beginning that you're starting from. Even if it feels like a struggle, that struggle is you know, a good thing. That struggle is building your character, okay? And you forget as much as you need 
to forget. Okay? We need to forget large portions of past life experience in order to grow in this lifetime. We have to re we have to once again muster the strength of character to master the things we need to master. When you reach a certain point where that is not necessary, then yes, you do remember. Sometimes it, the memory, well, for most of us, there's much more memory at the very birth and the first few years after birth. We almost all remember our past incarnation, at least the last one. <clears throat> But we lose that memory very quickly as the body matures, as the brain matures, as awareness matures, as the astral body forms, okay? But, you know, at a certain point in your evolution, you retain your memories throughout, okay? That's just the natural progression of reincarnation. <laughs> Things do get, in a sense, quicker, easier. Okay. Question number two. What is the purpose of life? Do we make our own purpose? Why does this physical realm of existence even exist in the first place? Couldn't we stay in the astral and mental realms instead of having to in reincarnate in this physical level of existence every time? The function of life, and it's a different purpose, okay? Function of life is the self-realization of the unified awareness of the I, the One Self. In its process of self-realization, it must interact with itself as other, okay? There must be self and other, this dynamic of interaction between self and other. Now, all self is an aspect of the one self just as all other is an aspect of the one self. This is part of the process of self-realization. It's just the way it is. Okay? And there's no why to it. It's just the only way that the I can self-realize is through going through this phase of looking at itself in microscopic detail of this interaction between self and other. So that is the function of life, to enact this self-realization of the I through the relationship of self and other but it's self that reincarnates, okay? Purpose is something that you have to give to your own life. You have to create your own reason for living other than just this basic function of interaction between self and other. Anything beyond that is up to you. It's totally your responsibility. Okay. Now, to me, the greatest source of understanding what can give meaning to your life, what naturally will be meaningful to do with your life, your incarnation, 
has to do with the unique aspect of your being. What makes you unique? You figure that out. And you there, you have your purpose. The whole universe agrees with that purpose. The enactment of your own uniqueness. Okay? That's something that only you have to give to the universe. And that's where we find purpose, is in giving. <clears throat> so look to your own uniqueness for that, the, the source of that purpose. And if that's, I mean, if you're still mystified, I suggest you go volunteer. I mean, as simple as that. Give of yourself to others. That's magic. That's so magical. When you give of yourself freely, voluntarily, to others. In whatever way you find to volunteer. Okay? That's, that's magic. Especially for, in terms of self-discovery. That's magic stuff right there. Okay. <clears throat> oh, yes. Now, no, you cannot stay in the astral realm. You can stay in the mental realm, but you cannot stay in the astral realm. The astral realm is temporary. It only exists because you are incarnating. Okay? You are taking on a physical body. It's the required medium between the awareness and the physical body is the astral body. That's the only reason it exists. The only time it exists. Okay? So you can't stay in the astral. Okay. So, third question. Does consciousness produce biology or does biology produce consciousness? And as far as artificial intelligence, AI, can it ever produce true consciousness rather than mimicking consciousness? Okay. Consciousness produces everything. The universe is mental, as the Kabbalion says, or what that's worth. That's just a basic tenet. Um, everything is about awareness, consciousness, okay? So our biology is a direct result of our consciousness, not the other way around. <clears throat> All the, the chemistry of the brain, of the electronics of the brain, this is all due to consciousness. Yes, if we fuck around with the chemistry and electronics of the brain, we can alter how consciousness expresses, because that's what the brain is. It's the medium. <clears throat> that's what our biology is. It's the medium of our expression. And we express ourselves through the biology. So when we change the biology, we change how, how we can express ourselves. Okay? But we do not change consciousness by changing the biology. And as to artificial intelligence, that's a... a, a a very appropriate question. Everything is consciousness. What does that tell you? Everything is consciousness. Even AI is a type of consciousness. Now, we are designing AI to mimic human consciousness, that's what we're trying to achieve, 
but it will never be human consciousness. It will be a different type of consciousness. It is a different type of consciousness. But it is consciousness nonetheless, because everything is consciousness. Okay? Now, question number four, which happens to be the last question for today. This question is about the moral conduct of the magician. Should each magician come to their own form of a moral code based on their individual observations of the universe? Or are there basic qualities that you believe all Bardonian magicians should have? If so, can you please share? Or is it best for one to be led by their own conscience or greater self voice. One's morality, one's ethics have always been completely personal, completely individual. No matter what one has proclaimed Oh, I'm following this moral code, or this code of ethics leads my way. When it comes down to it, it's always what the individual feels in their hearts, inside. No matter what the intellect has to say, what the words say no matter whose code we ad adopt. You know, <laughs> prime example of this is the clergy of just about every religion. They all profess a moral ethical code which they don't maintain in the majority of cases. This is why churches are going bankrupt left and right. Because their adherents didn't maintain the professed moral ethical code. Okay, so it, it's always what is in here. So, listen to what is in here. What is in you? What do you feel? Because morals, ethics, must always contain passion. They've got to be passionate things. Things that truly matter to you. That's where your morals reside. Okay? And, you know, if what's truly in there is ugly, then you need to change it. But by and far, for the vast majority of people, what's truly in there is not ugly. It is. In like 99.999% of the time, something truly beautiful that all this extraneous stuff gets in the way of expressing Okay, so you have to reach inside for these things. You can't hand that responsibility to somebody else. You know, that's your responsibility. Plain and simple. Okay, so that's enough <laughs> musing and pondering and pontificating from Ron for a week. I'll see you next time and Hopefully I've cleared away some of those spiders in the, in the box. So, till then, bye-bye.